we're going to do a quick video showing you how Trinitarians cannot answer scripture and how they have to add to scripture to prove their pagan trinity. Uh, this video here, uh, King's Table did about me, answering a comment, you know, of course, you know, they do videos about me and everything like that, but in the, in the comment section of this video about me, uh, this guy, Adam Hartley, he talks about how, you know, God's only one person, which is what the Bible says. I mean, show me a verse, I'll get to that later on, but show me a verse where God is called three persons. So I, I, I commented down below and I said, okay, give me a chapter and verse for God the Son. Son of God is a proper term, not God the Son. God the Holy Ghost, divine essence, one in unity, one in essence, etc., etc. You know, I asked him for a verse. Where does it say that in the Bible? Then I said, and I said to him, I can show you a scripture proving that God and Jesus are the same being. I quoted Isaiah 43:11, I am even I in the Lord, or sorry, I even I in the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. How does that work? If God the Father is calling Himself the Savior and Jesus is also called the Savior, so you, so we basically have two saviors then. Uh, no, they're they're they have the same being. But by Trinitarian logic, we have two saviors. I wrote, God the Father is called the Savior, and Jesus is also called the Savior. If Jesus and the Father are two separate be beings or persons, you know, quote unquote persons, then you have two saviors, you know. And, and of course, he didn't, he didn't, he couldn't answer that. Isaiah 45 verse 5. I quoted, I quoted him Isaiah 45 verse 5. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I grided the, the grided thee, though thou hast not known me. I said, there is, I wrote, there is no God beside the Father, but however in Acts chapter 7 verse 55 to 56, in Acts chapter 2 verse 32 to 33, Jesus is at the right hand of God. If Jesus was a separate person or being, that would mean you have two gods. That simple. They are the same being. Now, the, there is separation there. Like in Acts 7 and Acts 2, we see a separation there, but God says there is no God beside me. So if there are two separate persons, then you have two gods. And he says back to me, Godhead means divine essence. Okay, chapter and verse please. Look it up. Okay, and if when he he says look it up, but he doesn't give a verse, you know, interesting. If more than one is said to be one, it does not mean number one in English. I mean, what? Not sure what schools are like in Canada, but not too good. I see, so basically, one is not the number one. Okay, so basically, what he's saying is that God is not one being. So he's admitting to being a polytheist, a pagan. Then he talks about I'm not gonna read this whole thing. God the Son. Uh, Hebrews 1.8. Hebrews 1, Funny, because Hebrews 1.8, God actually worships Jesus Christ and praises Jesus Christ. Interesting. Uh, you said in the comment, the Trinity is of Catholic origin. No, I didn't. I said it's paganism, which, of course, is Roman Catholicism. Roman Catholicism is paganism. He asked me for a chapter and verse on Jesus as the body, and I actually give him one. Uh, and Father is the soul, Holy Spirit is the spirit, three parts. You have become hypocritical standards like you're, like Brian Dillinger. Uh, no, I'm not. Uh, again, there are areas where I disagree with Brian Dillinger on. Uh, he's not my standard. The Bible's the standard. And if you want some scripture on God being the soul, body, and spirit, I have my notes right here. Uh, if you want some scriptures on Jesus being the body, see Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 11. Father being the soul. Matthew chapter 12, verse 18. Matthew 17, verse 5. And Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. And the Holy Ghost is the spirit. See Acts chapter 5, verse 3 to 9. The Holy Ghost is the spirit. That's some scripture right there. So if you're watching this, answer me from the scriptures. So I quote him, uh, show me a verse where God, I, I asked him for a verse. Godhead means divine essence, chapter and verse on that. The phrase divine essence is nowhere in the Bible. I wrote you Trinitarian pagans have to add terms to scripture to explain your pagan three God trinity. And I quoted him John chapter 17 verse 21 to 22 and John chapter 10 verse 20 to 30, which where Jesus in John chapter 17, Jesus is speaking to the Father and he says, we are one. You know, talking about him and the Father, they are one. And of course, in John chapter 10, verse 30, he says, I and my Father are one. You know? And it's funny, because he, sa he says back, no, it would mean there are two separate persons who are God. So wait a second, you have two persons, they're both God, but then they're only one God. Okay, nutty nonsense. You think that Jesus is part of God? Uh, no, he says he is the same being. As I never say he's part of God. He's the same being as God. So you're a liar. Uh, a third, nope, never said that. He says, we, plural, look up the Godhead in Webster's 1828 dictionary. Um, when is a modern dictionary standard for the Bible? You add, you add to scriptures to explain yours. Okay, how am I adding to the scripture? You know, I, I mean, you have to add the terms divine essence, all this other stuff. I don't add any terms. I can show you, here's the Godhead, and the word Godhead is biblical. So how am I adding to scripture? Are you blinded by your hypocrisy? Have you not answered my questions? I said back to him, show me two persons in scripture. The only mention of person in reference to God is in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, and it is singular, not plural. 
no. And it's funny because he won't answer that. He just says back to me, Jesus is the body, chapter and verse, thou hypocrite. You know, because he couldn't answer the text. So, of course, I said back to him, uh, see Philippians chapter 2. And I said to him, Here, and here's a good thing that, that just really throws the Trinitarians, they can't handle this. Uh, here's a really good proof against the Trinity. In Matthew chapter 8, I write, I write back to him, in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, we are told to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But in Acts chapter 19, verse 5, we are told to baptize just in the name of Jesus. There's no mention of the Father and Holy Ghost. This is because, I mean, why is this? You know, is it a false baptism? Because they'll say Jesus' only baptism is false. But in Acts chapter 19, verse 5, we're told to baptize in the name of Jesus. This is be, I, write, I write to him, this is because Jesus is fully God within himself. So you can baptize in the name of the Jesus because the Father and the Holy Ghost and the Son are one being. 1 John 5, 7. And then and look what he does. He completely flips from the, from the thing. He completely flips the topic. Uh, completely changes the topic. Do you believe in original sin? Where is the exact words criteria? You know, when, when have I ever said I believe in original sin? The Father is the soul. You know, I showed I showed the scripture right earlier. I said to the Father and Son. Scripture tells us that the Father and Son are not the same person. Okay, chapter and verse, please. Where does it say the Father and Son are not the same person? Give me a chapter and verse. And he quotes, "The Son is a person." Second Corinthians two ten. Let me show you that. Sorry, I'm just trying to get this done fast. I have to go somewhere soon. Second Corinthians two ten. Person of Christ. Okay. Yes, Christ is person, but look how it says person singular. So you know, uh, whom you forgive me anything, I forgive you also. Uh, for if you forgive anything in whom I forgive you for your sakes, forgive I in the person of Christ. Okay, again, it's person singular. But again, compare that to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, verse 3. Who is the brightness and glory of his, or sorry, who is the, again, I'm trying to go fast because I have to go soon. Who being in the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person. So wait a second, Jesus is the, is the image of God the Father's person? So you have two persons, they're both fully God. But then they're not three. They're not two gods. They're one God. No, Jesus, the person of Jesus and the person of God are the same person. That simple. It doesn't say they're two separate persons. He's arguing from the sense that they're two separate persons. They're not. Uh, and he goes down. You know, he tries to twist Hebrews chapter one verse three. But this just shows how Trinitarians they cannot handle Scripture. You know, I mean, again, show me a verse where it says God is three persons. It doesn't say that person of Christ. You know, and it says a person of God, Christ is the image, the express image of God the Father's person. So you have two so how do you have two persons? They're not. He is the image of God the Father's person. You know? But again, you know, it comes down to the thing that he's lost. He cannot understand the scripture because he's lost. So that's, that's why he can't see this plain scripture. So that's my response. Trinitarians, they cannot handle scripture. They're following a uh, they they worship a false god. The Trinity is a false pagan idol. So anyway, don't be deceived. God bless you. Goodbye.